Hi. How to help people who need divine healing. Now, this is part three in a series I'm putting together of how I would go about, or one of some of the ways that I go about trying to help people. But if you get nothing else out of this series or out of today's message, do know this. We can help people who need divine healing. First off, I want you to know emphatically that it is God's will for people to receive healing and have their good health. God wants them. Jesus died on that cross and was whipped and beaten bloody beaten to a pulp so that by his stripes we might be healed physically and Jesus proved that in, in his earthly ministry he carried that down to his disciples not just the apostles but to his disciples and I want to emphasize that now uh, I've already mentioned the first thing I go after is the attitude I want to check their attitude adjust their attitude if necessary get them in the right frame of mind simple as that then the, the second thing I had mentioned was about teaching them and inspiring them to go after it well, this session I want to call it going after it with knowledge, or at least with some knowledge. I think the most important knowledge is to come to the conclusion and to the determination that it is God's will to heal those people. That's not always the easiest thing to, to convince people with, but today I want to take up the story of uh, one of two people that Jesus said had great faith while he was walking on this earth. Both of those individuals were Gentiles. They weren't even children of Israel, whom Jesus was sent to and only exclusively to, and this was a particular woman. And uh, Jesus said that this woman had great faith. Now the story itself can be found, you can read it in Matthew chapter 15 and in Mark chapter 7. I'd encourage you to read both portions of that and put them together. I'll try to help you with that today. But this woman not only went after it, but she went after it with some knowledge. But she also had great opposition or obstacles that she had to overcome. And I want you to consider this story. Jesus had taken his disciples away to the Mediterranean Sea coast, and there he wanted to just relax and refresh himself. And he would, the Bible says where he was staying, he would, that no one knew where he was. But this woman had knowledge of him. Apparently she had heard about the Messiah of the Israelites, and she heard of him, and she came crying loudly, publicly, outside the house, begging and pleading and screeching and crying crying out to God for, for her to have mercy on her. And um, let me just mention the four obstacles that she had. Number one, Jesus ignored her. Jesus ignored her. The disciples wanted to put her away. They rejected her. They said, Lord, send her away. She's bothering us. Thirdly, it was uh, presented to her that it wasn't even God's will for him to heal anybody that was outside of the household of Israel at that time. And then fourth, she was insulted. Now again, let's consider the story. She comes crying. Jesus ignores her. The type the disciples say, send her away, but she continues to go after her. She pushes past the disciples, that, that, uh, that front or whatever. And Jesus responded when he was ignoring her by telling his disciples, I'm only sent to the house, uh, to the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, it's not my father's will. I can't do it. But she presses in. She moves forward. She comes forward. She gets past Peter, James, and John, the sons of thunder, gets, gets there and then falls down at Jesus' feet. And she worships him and she says, Lord, please have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed. Please help her. And Jesus' response was, in many ways, probably an insult to her. And she must have been tempted with that insult to want to spit in his face or slap him across the face or something like that. Because he says to her directly, he says, It is not fit or meet or proper for us to give the children's bread to the dogs. He called her and her situation and her crisis a crisis among dogs. Very insulting, there's no doubt about it. But the woman responded by saying this to Jesus. Again, she went after it. She knew something, and we're going to get to the points of what she knew in a moment, but she went after it. She, uh, she says, truth, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off, the off of the master's table or the children's bread. The children knock off the table. And Jesus said, O woman, great is thy faith. For this saying, go thy way, the devil has departed from your daughter. And she went back home and she found when she got home that the devil had departed from her daughter. She was back in her right mind. Now again, four obstacles that she had to overcome. Number one, Jesus ignored her initially, her first pleas. Secondly, she was rejected by Jesus and rejected by the disciples who him, themselves had been sent out to heal the sick and do those works and, and had been doing it but in this case they rejected her flat out then she is told it is not my father's will Jesus said I'm only sent to the lost sheep of Israel she had knowledge of that and then of course again she was insulted 
easily tempted to turn away and walk away. But here are some of the things that she did. Number one, she knew that God was a God of mercy. She cried out to Jesus, Oh Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When you made reference to the son of David, David was probably the greatest example of God having mercy on one of his, one of his kings and one of his uh, prophets. God had great mercy on him because he, he had to for him to overcome the things that he did. And God loved David. But he loved him because of his faith. And, and so this woman used David. Son of David, have mercy. She knew. She went after it, knowing even though it's not God's will. And again, she knew this. By this time, she knew it was not God's will. Jesus was unresponsive. He flat out told her, it's not right for me to do this for you. But she went after it, went past that, asking for mercy. She also knew again that it wasn't God's will. The third thing, she knew to worship him. She pressed in and she bowed down and she worshiped him. And that didn't mean she made a big, you know, uh, you know well, she worshiped him from her heart. And then number four, she responded to him and said, Lord, what you're saying is the truth. I understand what you're saying. She complied with him. She didn't get angry with him. She didn't take the insult the wrong way. She even acknowledged, you're right, you're right. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this healing. Truth, Lord, I understand that. And then what, uh, the next thing she did is she said something. She argued her case. The, the Bible tells us in Isaiah to set forth your cause or plead your case. She knew faith had to say something. And Jesus himself made it very clear. He said, O oh woman, for this saying, the devil has left your daughter. For this saying, faith will say something. Now, I've, I'm just going to lay out a couple more facts here that's very important. Uh, when you go after it with knowledge, you, have, you can't just be a Christian and say you believe God without a foundation. You've got to have a foundation. You've got to know what you believe. You can't, just, you can't just stand your ground on air. You've got to have some firm foundation. That means you've got to have scripture that will support you. Or as this woman, you've got to be basing it on faith. Think about what she went Went, went and the obstacle she's had, she had to overcome. Think of what she overcame and what she knew. My friends, if you need healing or you know somebody that needs healing, unless they're uh, incapacitated where they can't, you know, they can't respond anymore, you know, teach them while you've got the energy. Go after it with whatever knowledge you have and increase in your knowledge of God by studying books and reading scriptures and people pointing out the Word of God to you. Stories like this that can inspire your faith. They're meant to inspire your faith. That's the purpose of God giving us those Gospels. Read those Gospels. Read the book of Acts. Read the epistles in the New Testament. It is God's will for you to go after it with knowledge. God bless you.